grass is so amazingly green and lush. Plant, I planted all of that grass. Deadlifts today. Only did a couple reps because like right here hurts. Someone made me sore the other day and uh, kind of hurts like right where you would get a hernia. I don't think I have a hernia, but I'm not gonna keep lifting. All right, I worked on the neck last night till past midnight and um, then I was thinking about this morning in bed and realized I thought I had it done, but I don't. So I still don't have the neck done. Haven't done the head. I have to do the arms and the legs, and then each of the arms and the legs are gonna be broken up into multiple um, segments. So I'm gonna do the shoulder girdle, the shoulder joint, the, f the arm, and then the forearm, and then I'm not doing the hands yet. I'm going to do the hands, but I'm not gonna do them yet. But I'm gonna do the wrist, so there'll be, for files that I'll be building, shoulder, shoulder girdle, shoulder joint, um, arm, forearm. And then for the leg, you have the hip joint, the uh, leg, and the shank and then the foot will be done later. Um, so those are the different files I have to build. So I, I still have to finish the neck, finish the head, then there's four for the uh, arm and three for the leg. So eight and a half files I still need to do. Let's see how many I've done so far. I only have four and I have eight and a half to finish. I done four and a half, I have eight and a half to finish. God, I hope I get this done by um, Thursday because that's when I'm supposed to go out of town with my friends and I really want to have it done. I might not. I mean, I'll try not to get so attached to it that I can't enjoy myself <laughs> for my one vacation a year. Um, but I really do want to have it done. I'm, I was, I'm really trying to have the, sh the frame of this thing built by the end of April. But if I don't, I'm going to keep doing the every day, the blogging every day, definitely until I finish it. And I might keep doing it after that. Depends on how, how things are going and what's, what things are looking like. But yeah. This is kind of a steaming hot pile of shit right now, but I got it done. So, sort of, I mean. So here's that uh, sub, um, superficial frame that goes around. You can see I haven't really put any kind of clasp here. They're just together, which won't work. Um, I have these pieces coming out to ride on that, um, which I'm not sure I super like. Uh, then right here, this doesn't even have a, um, superficial frame yet, so I realize I guess I'm not even completely done because I didn't put a superficial frame on this. I'm not even sure I'm gonna mess with it right now. See, because this piece really needs a part coming off of it too, but then that'll get in the way of this. And then the problem is, so what I'm thinking right now is a piece of sheet metal will come up from this, right there, from this plane, it'll come up um, like that, and it'll wrap around, and then it'll cover up all this, is kind of what I'm thinking right now. Um, you can tell these right here aren't supported. These right here aren't supported, so when these get pushed under load, this is definitely gonna bend, so this is not a very good design either because, and it can't, this would be your atlas joint right here, um, and it can't come to the front because it'd have to go right in the middle of your face. Um, so, it, it, so it can't really be supported down here, which is not a very good design. It's the problem with this thing. That's the problem with this thing right here is that it, um, it, it, it doesn't have any good compression resistance because, I mean, this is made out of plastic, but it's not supported in the front. It would be a lot better at, comp at handling compression um, if it wasn't that way. I mean, essentially, it just pushes down and touches itself. It like has no compression resistance, that thing over there. So I definitely don't like this. Um, you know, it's definitely not the way to do it, but I got... I got the first draft done. So here we are. I'm not even gonna bother putting a superficial frame on this part yet because I really need to think about how that's gonna go together. This is not ideal either. Um, I don't know. We got stuff to think about on it right now. But now I'm gonna switch over and I'm gonna do the head, which I'm gonna do very simply. Um, and I'm probably not even gonna put a superficial frame on the head right now. Um, I may end up doing it on the final suit We'll see, because um, it'd be kind of cool to be able to run stuff in between the two frames. Um, but I don't know. And then another thing that I am I need to do for these that I haven't even done yet to show you how how ill prepared we are to actually build this thing is that there there's supports right here coming off for the 
superficial frame, but there also needs to be a way to attach stuff to the inside because on the inside of this, there has to be foam in support to hold my body up on the inside. So I haven't even added the supports to go inside yet. I'm only doing the supports to go outside for the outer frame. Um, it could potentially be done with 3D printed parts um, since they don't need to be welded is an option because it's, it gets cumbersome to use just 2D parts because you got it like, I mean, look at this clasping mechanism here. It's super cumbersome, um, you know, but this would be like a high force part because this is, would be handling actuators and um, I mean, it's Iron Man, so you know, getting hit by enemies and shit. <laughs> um, so that's why that needs to be strong. The part going in inwards doesn't have to be as strong because it's up against me, you know? And if I'm taking heavy loads, something's gone seriously wrong because I should be very comfortable in here. And so it could be, a, I could just 3D print something that goes in there. Like it could be a part that just like one of these takes one or two of these washers and then kind of goes over the top of it and then it comes around. Um, and then that's how the foam goes in. I don't know, something like that. Uh, so I can figure that out. I, I'll probably end up 3D printing the supports to go in there, but I might have to end up putting a couple of holes somewhere in order to, atta in order to attach the 3D printed parts. So I gotta think about that too. Anyway, I'm gonna do the head now. Um, I don't think the head will take very long because there's no joints in it. I'm just gonna essentially do a really quick, uh, I'm thinking like um, coming up to here and then there'll be a part going over the head right here. I think there'll be a part coming over the back. There'll probably be one coming up and then one coming to the chin. So I'll probably make like a, a joint right there. And then that will have pieces coming off in every direction. And then there will be, and the part, this will unbolt right here. So there'll be un the jaw part will un unbolt, the mandible will unbolt. Yesterday I went through and I did, and I wrote on the board and I figured out mostly the uh, um, superficial frame for the arms. And then I realized I didn't really do that for the neck. It's probably why I had so much fucking trouble with this is I was trying to figure out as I was going, I didn't really know where I was going. Um, and I still don't like the way it is. So I'm gonna rethink that for sure. And then next time, I mean, at least I have an idea of where the joints are going and I have, at least to take an attempt at the superficial frame, but I'm gonna completely rethink all of that. Um, and then next time I do it, hopefully we'll actually know where I'm trying to go. And then the same lessons that apply to this will also apply to the lumbar. I mean, they're essentially the same type of system going on, just the neck is smaller. And then uh, can be supported, the lumbar can be supported in the front, the neck really can't, um, unless I figure out something clever. But yeah, so next time, hopefully this will be a lot better. Um, and then hopefully, the superficial frame will go better on the legs and on the arms because I've actually thought it through a little bit. Of course, I haven't thought it through on the shoulder girdle, so maybe I need to stop and do that really quick before um, I do that. Anyway, I'm gonna do the head real quick. I have, I'm actually liking the head. Didn't like the neck, but I'm liking the way the head went together. So um, I would like to make it more shapely and more Iron Man, um, especially I think I'm gonna have some issues here across the face. Um, and I want this to be you know, this, this would probably be the most shaped piece of metal I have to build um, to put to weld on here. But I really like the way that um, this is, I, I figured out how to attach this, and I think I'm probably gonna end up using this in more places. But if you look at this here, if I take this off right there, um, so right there we have a locking key, so that um, keeps transition this way. And then um, a bolt will go through this hole and that'll lock it um, in this axis right here. Um, so that'll be good. And then these two smaller holes are gonna be, they're set up for a point, um, a number two size machine screw. Um, so they can go through there and that would probably be enough to hold it together. But what I'm really thinking I'll do is I'll just bolt those two together and then weld around this. And then these two will be one piece and these will just be there to keep it aligned. And then I can take those out and I could fill it with a rod or I could keep them in there. Um, I could weld them in there. Um, there's a lot of options, but those would just essentially be there just to get this all aligned. And that's why there's two of them instead of one of them, get it all aligned and then weld it on. And then, then this bolts together. And then one thing I'm probably gonna do um, that I didn't do on this one, but I probably will do is I'll probably leave this one right here, leave this bar here, but then do another pe removable piece underneath it. And that way the entire mask can come off and on, kind of like Iron Man. Um, on this one, I'm thinking there probably won't be any mechanism to slide the mask up and down. Um, I don't know, I might end up doing that. I might have it just bolt in, I might have it slide up and down, we'll see. Uh, it would be pretty Iron Man-esque to have it slide up and down. So maybe I'll figure out a way to do that. It probably wouldn't be that difficult. Um, but for now, it would be a bolt-in design. And then I think, I really, like I said, I really like this bolt-in design. I think I'm probably gonna use this 
in some other places. Um, the only problem with it though is that the bolt has to kind of come up from underneath. It won't be able to come down because the mask will be there. Um, so in order to bolt it in, you'll have to get a screwdriver or something up underneath. So that would be a little difficult. So I'll, um, I mean, I'll keep thinking about it and maybe that'll work and maybe it won't. And then if we had it rotate up, we could put that rotational point out here somewhere and just have it rotate up and down, up and down. So I'd have to, I'll have to look into that a little bit too, if we can do that. Um, or if it's better just to have it bolt in to begin with, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But anyway, uh, done with the head. So now I'm going to go down and I'm going to do the shoulder girdle. But first I'm going to think about how I'm going to do the superficial, um, uh, frame on that no f superficial frame on the head right now. And I'm pretty sure that's how I'm going to do it. You can see right here, this goes through my man bun right there. Um, I would consider cutting my hair, uh, in order to fit in this thing if I had to, but I don't think it'll be necessary. So, um, I just had it up and then in a little, uh, swimmer's cap when I got this scan made. So it's just going right through there. So this might be a part I actually 3D print first or something to make sure it actually fits in there before we get it built. But yeah, anyway, I'm gonna move on to the shoulder girdle. So here is the rough shape of, this is the torso, this right here is the joint the frontal joints of the, cl of the clavicle. And so then, probably gonna have, this is all superficial exoskeleton right now. Superficial frame, or sorry, deep frame right now. This is the deep frame right now. All the blue is deep. So here's that sliding joint right here. And then somewhere right about here is where it's going to come off of. And so remember this turns around the clavicle as well. That's coming down so it can go up without hitting into this strut right here. And this is going to attach up here in some way, kind of like that. And then here, this right here is this joint right here. So this is the shoulder joint right here. So shoulder joint right there. So this is the sliding joint. So this is the transverse plane right here, this right here. This is the frontal plane up and down, so this slides back and forth. This is the that sliding joint that I've used on the lumbar and on the neck, and now I'm also using in the um, clavicle, and then I will also use on the arms, that joint right there, and on the legs, um, so the humerus and the femur. Um, the lumbar, the neck, and now on the clavicle in the sagittal plane. So this right here, this joint right here will allow you to go up and down like this, and this joint right here will allow you to go forward and back like this. Good, deep frames. Now we gotta figure out how to put a superficial frame on top of this. All right, I think that's it. So this in here, this will all be the frame that's on the torso, and you know it'd be going this way. Um, like that around the torso like that around my torso the exoskeleton torso going around like that and then um, out here onto the part that is not sliding will be another frame right there um, ooh, that might not work hold on and then this part will come out and go over the lower sliding part so the superficial frame will come over the deep frame of this sliding part and then another piece of uh, like armor that'll probably not uh, would probably bolt in down here and up there so this would probably extend down like this like that and then some component of the deep frame would come down to receive it like that so they would be kind of intermeshed. So it'd be like the deep frame would then come up and then go, the superficial frame would then come over the deep frame of this part. And then the deep frame of, the superficial frame of that part would then come over the superficial frame of that part. So it'd be kind of stacked up and interwoven, which would be kind of cool. That kind of makes sense. And then a pauldron will go over all this and it'll be, uh, um, strapped down with fabric so it can move around. And then uh, for flight, I'm thinking there'll be actuators in there that can really lock it down so it doesn't vibrate. 
uh, when we were flying at the speed of sound um, for this design. Um, but yeah, like that. And then, so this over here I did yesterday, but this comes out this way. There's that joint. And then um, this will be coming kind of over it like that as well. So that I think looks good. Now it's time to make it. Whew. I have never done so much catting in my life. So much catting. Guess what? I revived my plant. It came back to life. That's good. Um, I'm starving. I'm going to go up and I'm going to get a Chipotle. I've put the order that these um, are going to go in as far from deepest to most superficial. So we got one, two, three, four. So one is going to be superficial frame, then deep frame, or sorry, superficial frame. Wait, that's wrong. Hold on. There we go. So superficial frame, deep frame, both on the the part that would be the biggest, and then um, deep frame uh, on the part that moves, and then superficial frame. So deep, superficial, deep, superficial. They'll be layered through each other. It's the best way I can think to do it right now. At least it'll give me a target to head towards. This is also the order I should build them in. So I've already built um, built this mostly, um, almost done there. So almost done with that. And then next I need to do the superficial frame that would butt up against this. Um, and then I need to do the uh, deep frame and then put the superficial frame of that on top of that. And then these two will touch each other. And these two will touch each other and support each other. Chipotle time. <laughs> Let's talk about the arc reactor really quick. So eventually I want to power this thing with some kind of nuclear energy. Um, ideally it would be fusion, but fusion doesn't exist yet. So we're going to use fission. Um, fission is the breaking down of something. Fusion is putting two things together. They both release energy. Uh, so you use some kind of plutonium or uranium, um, and then you need neutrons to Neutrons cause, when a neutron hits a plutonium atom, it causes it to break and fizz into two different um, atoms and releases a bunch of energy in the process. So the way you control uh, both reactors and bombs is the amount of neutrons being um, produced. And uh, bombs, you usually compress a, uh, or you combine two pieces of uranium, or you can compress a piece of uranium with explosives because it becomes something called supercritical. Um, and then there's so many neutrons being released that they just runs out of it. The reaction essentially happens all at once, and that's when you get shit tons of energy released. Um, so what they do in nuclear reactors is they have rods that go up and down, and they absorb neutrons. And so they can control, because uranium and plutonium break down, they have a ra they radioactively decay, so they're always giving off neutrons. Um, so you have a bunch of them together, uh, they become what's called a critical mass, and they'll keep getting hotter and hotter. And then so what you do in reactor cores is you lower and raise um, rods, that uh, absorb neutrons. That's how you do it in a reactor. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a fusion reactor um, that won't be energy net positive called a Farnsworth reactor. And a Farnsworth reactor is a great source of neutrons. So I'll put um, a Farnsworth reactor in the middle or next to one of the two, a uh, nuclear um, uh, uranium or plutonium deposit and then I'll use the Farnsworth reactor to control the amount of neutrons being produced to control the reaction rate of the plutonium or uranium. And then how I'm going to absorb the heat energy and turn it into electrical energy I'm going to talk about in a sec. Uh, to go. And can I do a tortilla on the side? Um, brown rice. Can I do two scoops of brown rice? And two scoops of black beans? Um, can I see the chicken? I like to look. Chicken looks good, yeah. Pico de gallo, um, some spicy, some corn, uh, sour cream, cheese, and lettuce. So I'm planning on using something called thermo, thermocouplers. And uh, there's a term for them when they're put together and they, they print them kind of like circuit boards. I think they're called a TAC. I can't remember what it stands for. Um, to, they work, they produce um, electricity across a heat gradient that's how they work and they just it's just two wires or two different types of metal and something about the uh the metal lattice causes electrons to flow um, between the two with the transfer of heat with the flow of heat it moves electrons as well so you produce electrical voltage 
um, and then depending on how hot the uh, reactor is operating at, we'll also be using um, photoelectric converters to, con to convert the uh, either um, the heat light, the light from the heat, or visible light, depending on how hot um, the reactor is operating at. Eventually the goal will be to make the propulsion systems on the um, suit electric so they can be driven by the reactor. My eventual goal is to make this suit never run out of energy. I mean, not never, because the, eventually the uranium would be depleted. But like where you could wear the suit for 20 years and like not have to change batteries. I might be a bit excessive because that might be a lot of uranium, but at least a year or something like that. Or if you're producing a lot of energy, like flying is probably going to require a lot of energy. So we might need more, um, it might suck up the uranium faster, deplete the uranium faster. But, but yeah, eventually it'll, the goal will be to make it electric. Um, and I'd like to make some kind of electric rocket, some kind of thermal rocket that, um, heats up either water or liquid hydrogen, probably water because it's easier to store. And then it heats it up and turns it into a really high um, temperature gas, the same way that uh, combustion rockets work. Um, but instead of the heat that you need for the rocket coming from the combustion product of uh, like what they're using on um, what they're using on the Falcon rockets, the SpaceX rockets, is they use uh, kerosene refined kerosene and then um, liquid oxygen. Um, so instead of using kerosene um, and liquid oxygen combustion to produce your heat, you use some kind of electrical power, electrical way of heating water to a very, very high temperature and you can use it. As long as you can do it fast enough, you can make it a rocket. It's very, it's gonna be very difficult to pull that much energy out of uranium, put it into water that quickly and quickly enough to fly um, like a rocket it's going to be very, very difficult. This is like way down, way down the road. Um, but you use some kind of way of generating um, uh, really high energy and warming water very quickly. There, the proposed ways, the theoretical proposed ways for doing that is to use microwaves or some kind of electrical arc um, or lasers. Um, I think you could use something like an induction furnace as well. Um, so something like that, that would be the ultimate goal. All right, while I was eating, I was, uh, I watched some Casey Neistat, and then I watched, uh, I was telling you about uh, thermocouples. Um, they're called TECs, not TACs. I don't know what that stands for. Solid state TEC, but essentially it's a, uh, it's a series of, um, it's a bunch of uh, thermocouples in parallel. Yeah, in parallel. Um, and uh, no, I think they're in series. A bunch of uh, um, TECs in series. And um, this guy called his his channel's name is Tech Ingredients, and I'll link him. I'll link two videos below. One, he talks about making. Uh, so he's an old profet. He's a professor who studied refrigeration. And he makes a bunch of really cool shit. He makes like a jet engine, and uh, he does a lot of cool shit with magnets. Um, but uh, he, he works with these TECs that if you, if you heat them, you can make electricity. And if you put electricity into them, you can make heat and make something cold as well. So you can flow temperature with electricity or you can flow electricity with temperature. Anyway, uh, he's doing the refrigeration uh, temperature change part of it. But kind of the reverse of that would be making electricity. Um, so I'll link him below. One of them, he makes a refrigerator. And then he talks about stacking them on top of each other, which is what I want to do in order to generate, make a solid state electrical generator for my suit using a fusion fission um, reactor. So that's kind of how I want to make the arc reactor. Iron Man needs an arc reactor. I'll link those below. You should check them out. Really good videos. Really smart guy. Yes, that's just says something.
All right, so for sort of the first time, I'm starting to feel like I'm getting somewhere with this. It's something I like. I like the way this is going together right now. So I'm gonna finish it and come back and explain it better, but this right here is how that bolts on. So this sticks off and comes off of this, and then just two bolts come right through there, and then this piece will just pop off. And then the other piece that comes off of this will wrap around and it'll push against that. So it'll be support on the outside and on the inside. And that I'm starting to like. There's gonna be another, there would be another joint over here to move with the superficial frame of this, of the torso. But I'm starting to like it. So now I'm gonna go add on the other piece and I'll show you guys that. Oh man, I'm so tired. Uh, I realized that I really liked the design. It was really ornate the way that the superficial frame went on. But I realized, I realized that I really can't get to the shoulder joint right now very well. It also looks like, okay, scratch that. I found a way to, I know I see how to get to this shoulder joint right now. Problem is, is when you pull your shoulder back, you're gonna run into this entire apparatus. I think right now the fix for that is just to mount it closer to the body. But I don't know, I have to think about it. I'm trying to use Inkscape because it won't work on my Mac and I completely deleted it and then I couldn't get it re-downloaded. So I'm restoring from my hard drive time machine. At least Mac makes it really easy just to restore back. So hopefully I get it and hopefully I can get it working the way I had it, hopefully. So yeah, I was trying to, I watched Nick's video and he made stickers and he put stickers everywhere. And it's something I've been wanting to do, but I wasn't planning on doing it now, but then Nick did it, so I wanted to do it. Cause I don't want Nick to beat me. <laughs> um, so I went and I did that. And I work on a, in a um, software called Inkscape, which is an open source um, vectorizing thing. It's how I made uh, my channel banner. But I was trying to open it and it wouldn't work. So I thought, oh, I'm just gonna delete it and re-download re -download it. And I deleted it and then I couldn't re-download it in any way. Um, so now I'm using Time Machine to back up my shit. And uh, it says it's gonna take six hours to back up, which I don't think it'll take that long. It usually doesn't, it usually goes a lot faster than that, but it'll probably take at least an hour or two. Um, so I'm, it's not a big deal. I have backups on the cloud and I have a backup on my desk. So I'm just going back for my backup. It literally backed up like, it backs up like every hour um, automatically. It's why I like Mac OS um, better than anything else. Um, one of the many reasons I like Mac OS better than anything else. But uh, anyway, um, I can't work right now and uh, my sister's coming to town and they wanna go eat some dinner. So um, I'm gonna go get dinner with them, I'm gonna hang out. Uh, I also have to work, I have to work a couple hours a night. Um, and then after that, come back, finish this video. Probably do a little bit more work tonight. Try to get the shoulder girdle going. Um, I was getting close on it. I was just so tired. I like I couldn't. I couldn't fucking look at it. So I was trying to take a break from that and and make a sticker, but um, that ended up not working. <laughs> so um, so anyway, I need to finish the shoulder girdle. I'm very close. I just need to get from the shoulder girdle shoulder girdle part to the shoulder joint, and then pretty much be home free after that. We'll see if I get it done tomorrow. I mean, worst case, I take my break and then I do it. I was even thinking that my files really aren't even that ready for a quote. I'm gonna have to go through and I'm gonna have to change my files. So if we get it done by Friday and send over to them, that'd be really nice, but, and they probably won't even look at it by Friday anyway. So they probably won't get back to me till Monday. So who knows? I don't know. We're going to get as much done as we can before I go out of town. Absolutely. And then I'm getting very close to being done with the first draft. Um, I don't think it'll take me that much longer to get it done. Um, I'm almost done with the shoulder girdle, which is the last part that I had never built before. I think I've said that like 10 times, but I think it's actually true this time. Um, I've never built the legs, but like I said, they're essentially bigger versions of the arms. They'll be very similar. Um, I haven't built the feet before, and so I'm gonna need to do that. And then uh, I've changed some stuff in the wrist from what I've done before, even though I have built, I have built an arm before. So I built the arm, so there's no surprises there. Um, I'm sure there'll be some, but uh, mostly good to go there. And then, um, 
got to do the legs and there's a few things on the legs. There's one thing in particular I'm thinking about that I might try to do, but I haven't figured out how I'm going to do it yet on the legs, which I'll, I'm not going to talk about right now, but, um, there is one thing that's a little bit different on the legs and there might be on the arms, but anyway, um, we're getting close. We're getting close. Um, there's a chance I might even be able to knock it out tomorrow because I kind of know what I'm doing in theory, um, on, uh, on the arm and the legs. So there's a chance, there's a chance we may get it done. I might get the quote sent out before I leave, but we'll see. Um, stay tuned. Uh, I know it's just me working on software right now. So if you're watching these, um, that's awesome. Thanks for watching them. I know it's just me thinking out loud and it's not that exciting. So I'm not burning and building and cutting shit. Um, there's plenty of that to come though. So stay tuned. I am going to build this thing and I'm going to mock around in it and then I'm gonna try to power it and then I'm gonna try to make it fly. I mean, I'm gonna try to do all of it. Um, that's all going to come. So stay tuned. I'm going to get this, the software side of things. I know it's not that interesting for you guys, but I have to, I have, just have to work it out. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. Um, love you guys. You like my new Apple Watch? It's Bailey's. My heart rate's 55 beats a minute. That look kind of good. Ooh, that's... That's... What, what number are you at for being with Y'all don't even know. I was with the camera about like five minutes ago. Hey, guys. <laughs> that's cool. That's cool. Rather delicious. Yeah, we did it again.